Eight tips for backpacking the Grand Canyon. Hey guys, Steven here at My Life Outdoors. And if you're thinking about backpacking the Grand Canyon, well here are eight tips plus a few more to help you out. Number one, if you've never spent a night below the rim, it's highly recommended that your first trip be along the corridor. The corridor is the park's main artery and features year-round water, well-maintained trails, and developed backcountry campgrounds. The Grand Canyon is big, remote, mostly dry, with extreme temperatures and huge elevation changes. Venturing out before you really know what to expect can be dangerous, and hiking the corridor provides that extra level of security that helps you get your feet wet safely, sometimes literally. With that being the case, almost all the tips on this list assume that you're planning a trip along the corridor. Number two, water. It's possible to get by without carrying large amounts of water in the canyon. There's running water all along the corridor campgrounds and at other spots along the trail. But depending on the time of year, some areas could be turned off. So check with the backcountry office or one of the campgrounds to see where water is available and where it's not. Number three, time of year. Summer in the canyon can get very hot with very little shade for relief. For milder temps and a more enjoyable experience, plan your trip in the spring or fall. But be aware that last minute snowstorms can occur as late as April and as early as October. And if there's snow in the canyon, you're gonna want a pair of crampons. I'll put a link below for the pair that I use and that I recommend. Number four, be prepared for a wide range of weather, especially in the spring and fall. On our trip in mid-March, we saw temps as low as 15 degrees, as high as 70 and everything in between. It snowed, it rained, it was windy and hot all within the span of four days. So be prepared and bring lots of layers. And don't forget that no matter what time of year you hike, temperatures at the bottom of the canyon are typically 15 to 20 degrees warmer than at the rim. Number five, pack light. I mean, this, this goes without saying, right? The canyon is big, it's got almost 5,000 feet of elevation change. Going down can be hard on the joints and the feet, especially with a heavy pack. Going up can be relentless and grueling, and a light pack helps ensure that you continue to enjoy your trip. So consider taking only one set of clothes, paring down your gear, and taking advantage of water availability. The Park Service even recommends ditching the tent and the sleeping bag in the summertime. So do your research, plan well, and pare down your pack. Number six, train for going down as well as up. The trip down really does a number on your calves, and it can leave you sore and hobbling for days. Just about everyone I saw the bottom was limping around, and the first thing the park ranger asked us was, how are the legs? Find a way to train not just for going up, but for going down too. Number seven, if you apply for a permit and are denied, don't give up. Instead, take a chance on a walk-up permit or put your name on the wait list. You might be surprised at how quickly a permit becomes available. And for more information on how to get a last minute permit, check out my video here. Number eight, the squirrels are quick, fearless, and will chew a hole in your pack or tent to get to food. Don't even leave empty Ziploc bags in your pack as the squirrels have associated the smell of Ziplocs with food and will chew holes just to see what's in them. Use a provided food storage boxes and guard your pack anytime that you're away from camp. Now for a few bonus tips. The ground is hard and the canyon is windy. Tent stakes may or may not go on the ground. So be prepared to either replace your tent stakes after this trip, buy beefier stakes in advance, or use rocks to keep your tent from blowing away. Bonus tip number two. If you're camping a bright angel, try to get site number 23. Even the park rangers agreed it was the best because it was close to the bathrooms and it had no neighbors on either side. Bonus number three, there are toilets all along the trail, so save some weight and leave the toilet paper and trowel at home, unless you're planning some side hikes where it might come in handy. Bonus number four, side hikes to Ribbon Falls and Plateau Point are worth it. Bonus number five, bring a headlamp or a flashlight with a red filter. The stars in the canyon are spectacular, and the park has signs posted all over the campground asking you to use red light to help you preserve night vision. So there you have it, eight plus tips for backpacking the Grand Canyon. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure that you like it below and you leave us a comment to let us know what you think. Also, please consider subscribing and check out some of my other videos. I got a lot of videos coming out right now about the Grand Canyon, so subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss any of them. Also, make sure you check out my blog at mylifeoutdoors.com, and as always, thanks for watching.